The next thing we're going to cover is overpaint color and overpaint texture, two very similar things. And we can actually go back to our original uh, object here. So I'm going to go back to my quick saves and we're going to go ahead and go grab that previous project we've been working on. There we go. Let's go ahead and hit BPR render. And in case you're just joining us, I'm going to walk you through what we've done so far. So, so far what we've done is we've put in a material shading node, which means no matter what material the user puts in, we're going to replace it with matcap gray. And then what we're going to do is go ahead and do a filter saturation and desaturate everything. So even if they have a poly paint on their object, it's going to desaturate it. Then we have flat shading, which makes it sell like a, and you can go ahead and turn these on and off, I suppose. So as though there, there's our matcap gray version. And then here's our flat shaded version, which kind of posterizes it, makes it more graphic. And then here's our outline edge that we've added. And then we did a displace filter for kind of a sketchy line look. And then we've broken up those sketchy lines with lighter sketchy lines and we've done a filter sharpen and then and, uh, this is when we're messing with the contrast the orton filter and then the user color filter and then finally the screen tone dots to kind of add some screen tones to the shadow areas and this is a very cool comic book feel it looks like it was sketched and then inked and then shaded in using half tones and that's totally fine uh, what we're going to do is we're going to back off some of these things we're going to take away the screen tone the contrast the Orton, the Sharpen, and we're going to go back and make this look more sketchy. So now we're back to just kind of a drawing here. So now with this filter we had, uh, which we previously had with Sharpen, we're going to go down here and we're going to do overpaint color. And what overpaint, well, overpaint sounds like, you know, you're overpainting, uh, but if you just turn it on, you're going to see just a bunch of squares. So in order to explain this a little bit better, what I'm going to do is I'll take this overpaint color and we're just going to crank that up and you're going to see uh, everywhere a square kind of lands on our image, it's taking that entire chunk of our image and giving us a average value. So you can see there on the object where it's darker, it's giving us a darker square. And then over here where it's mostly background with a little bit darker, this one's a much lighter square. Now you, also, you may be wondering like, well, the average of this square should be this color because it's all one color. The reason it's not is if you go in here under modifiers, you're going to see that by default, the adjust intensity set to 0.2. So we set this to zero. Now you'll see, okay, yeah, the average of that square chunk is this color. So it's the exact same color. However, over here, it's a little bit darker. So it takes that average color. Uh, if we go back in here to modifiers and you can see the reason you're able to see the image behind it is because the width and the height is set to 0.8. So if we go one enter and then one enter, uh, those cubes or those squares will match up. And now we have a very pixelated image. So if we take this overpaint color and we drag that value down, you're going to see we actually get a pixelated version of our object. So all that sharp detail that we had, it's taking a pixel size chunk and you get to determine the size of the pixel by changing the overpaint color size and then it's taking the average value of that chunk. So you can very easily get a pixelated version of your image using this method. Of course, there's a lot more things we can do with this. So let's go ahead and crank that overpaint color size up again. And we're gonna go back in here to modifiers. So we're gonna back these back down. So I'm just gonna take this width and we're gonna drop this down and take this height and drop this down just using the sliders. And I'm also gonna go down here to this adjust intensity. I'm gonna drop that back down as well, just so we can see all the squares that are composing this image. Now I'm just going to go through all of these options while we're sitting here talking about it and we'll see if we can come up with something cool to do with this. So uh, base orientation, you're going to see we can go ahead and rotate these squares in any direction that you'd want. The size by intensity, if you crank this all the way up, you're going to see, and that's like, actually, let's, uh, let's change this width and height back to 8. So 0 0.8 and 0 0.8. Now you can see a little bit better where it's lighter, the squares are bigger. Where it's darker, the squares are smaller. Of course, you can invert that by going size intensity to negative 1. Uh, and now you can see the dark squares are bigger and the light squares are smaller width and height we've already talked about. You can also do rotated offset and that just kind of moves these things around. Same thing as horizontal and vertical offset. Alpha adjust intensity we talked about, you can either make these squares darker overall or lighter overall. We'll make them slightly darker so you can see them. Adjust hue and adjust saturations isn't going to do too much because we aren't working with a color image. We'll work with a color image in just a second. But uh, adjust saturation, if you turn it to the right, will actually falsely or just arbitrarily saturate your image. Uh, but if you had color, you could desaturate it using that. X slope is going to turn it into triangles one way and then triangles another way. So you can play with that value. And then drop shadow is going to add drop shadows to your square here. And you can change the shadow brightness. So you can see here it's a very bright shadow. In fact, you can almost turn it off completely by setting it to one. And then uh, actually it doesn't turn it off. It just makes it the same value as the overall chunk or the overall square that it has. Uh, however, we drop this down to a very small value. It's a very dark drop shadow. And then a horizontal offset for that drop shadow. Uh, if you turn these both to zero, you can essentially hide the drop shadow behind the object. And then as you crank these up, it'll go ahead and offset that shadow just a bit you know, down and to the side. 
Uh, colorize isn't going to do too much just because, again, we're working with the grayscale image. Uh, but if we go back up here and we go back to our overpaint color and we crank that down and we make it very small, you can see we're actually getting kind of a cool effect. Kind of looks like it's printed on some plastic weave here. So if we, again, crank that back up and you play around with these values, you can make it actually look like a canvas weave if you wanted to. We could, um, say, make that width and then over crank the height. And then again, if we bring this down, you can create kind of a texture for the overall image or the overall canvas. Now, of course, you can set this to just uh, your object here, or you can set it to just the canvas, or you can do a little bit of a blend between both. We'll go ahead and set this to zero for now. Let's go ahead and crank this up. And underneath the modifiers, let's talk about this side over here. We have uh, orientation vari variation. So no matter how you're oriented, if you crank this up to say 35, that's gonna give you, in this case, 17 and a half degrees one way and 17 and a half degrees another way. You can also do orientation by intensity. So again, wherever uh, it's darker, it seems like it's getting um, more variations between uh, rotations. And I suppose if you did the opposite, you'll get more variations within the lighter. Uh, with variations, you can vary that width quite a bit. And then if you've ever played with nano meshes, this is very similar. You can just uh, adjust by height and width and size variations, all sorts of cool stuff you can do. So we do height variations here. Again, it's just adding variance, even with your intensity. You can make it, so it, make it so it adds a lot of different variations in your intensity or very little. And you may have, and hue variations isn't going to do anything because it's not a colored image. And you may be wondering, you know, what's the point of all of this? Again, if you drop this down, you can start seeing you can get very interesting effects. So in this case, we've created kind of, uh, it makes it kind of look like it's printed on a cloth or a canvas. And again, if you want to delegate that to just more of the background, you can go up here to this mask and we'll set that to mostly the background. 